All right, everyone, time for another dynamics physics problem, static friction on an incline part one. The coefficient of static friction between hard rubber and normal street pavement is about 0 0.801. On how steep a hill, maximum angle, can you leave a car parked? Okay, hey, first things first, like every other problem, we wanna draw a free body diagram. Okay, so now my incline is just gonna be a right angle triangle facing to the left. Okay, hey, now my car is also gonna be a very simple drawing. Again, simpler the better. So there's my car. Um, now for the forces. The one thing that never really changes direction is force of gravity. It's always going straight down. Okay, so I'm gonna draw that from the center of the car going down. That's FG. Okay, now normal force. This is where it gets a little different. We're used to the normal force going exactly opposite gravity, so going up like this. But remember, by definition, the normal force is the surface pushing on the object. And the surface is at an angle, and perpendicular to that surface means it's going like this. Okay, so in fact, the normal force goes in this direction. Okay, now the last force, the car is supposed to be stuck on the hill. So we're dealing with the maximum static friction. If the car is trying to roll down the hill, static friction must oppose that. That means it goes up the hill. Okay, so we say F, F, S. In this question, we don't have kinetic and static. We just have static, so I'm just going to put FFS directly in the free body diagram. Now, a couple of other things. This incline is at an angle theta, okay? And look how these forces are at different angles. These two are perpendicular to each other, but then we've got that FG, which is strange. Okay, so for problems like this, where you're dealing with an object on an incline, whether it be a car, a sphere, whatever it is, you want to set a new coordinate axis, okay? And the coordinate axis we're gonna use for this problem looks like this, where X is up the incline and Y is perpendicular to the incline, making FG at an angle. Okay, so now that FFS is in the positive X, FN is in the positive Y, we have to break FG up into components so that it has an X and Y component as well. Okay, so remember, when you're given a force that you then need to break up into X and Y components, the actual force is considered the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down a line here from FG, and then I'm gonna connect it. So I've made my right angle triangle there. Okay, the base of this right angle triangle is going to be my FGX, and the vertical part is gonna be FGY. Okay, now there's something important, at, really important at this point. Okay, that little angle inside, the angle that FG makes with FGY, that angle there is the same as the angle of the incline, theta. Okay, some simple trigonometric steps can show you that that is the case, but in fact, yeah, that angle and this angle are, will always be the same. Okay, so hopefully you can see that theta there. Okay, so there's theta, we've got our components. Now we can start. Based on the center of this car, FGX is going towards the left. Okay, and FS, FFS is going up the incline. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to assume acceleration is equal to zero, which means the net force is also zero. And this is actually valid in both the X and Y directions. In the Y direction, the car is certainly not bouncing up and down. It's not working on hydraulics. And in the X direction, it's also not accelerating. When you overcome the maximum friction, static friction, we're gonna assume no acceleration, just like we did in video 67. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start working in the X direction because that's after all what we're looking for. Okay, the angle will be easier to extract from this direction. Okay, so in the X direction, <clears throat> F net X is equal to zero. And again, in the positive X, we've got force of static friction. In the negative X, we've got FGX. So this is gonna be FFS minus FGX equals zero. Okay, so bring the minus FGX to the right, make it positive. So FFS equals FGX. Okay, now, just like in the previous video 67, uh, force of friction is equal to the product of the coefficient of friction with the normal force. Now, because this is static friction, it's gonna be the product of the coefficient of static friction with the normal force is equal to FGX. Now, FGX, we're gonna use some trigonometry here. This triangle might be a little hard for you to see on the screen there, so I'm gonna take this same triangle and I'm gonna blow it up and draw it here. Okay, so we've got FG going down. 
and we did a y component and an x component okay and those two met at right angles of course and we had fgy on this side we had fgx on this side and that angle theta that the incline makes with the horizontal that's the same angle theta that we're going to have right there okay so fgx is one side of this right angle triangle and in fact if you were to solve for what it is fgx is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of theta okay so fg sine theta and fg is after all just mg so mg sine theta is equal to fgx okay similar thing with fgy fgy is equal to the hypotenuse fg and this is adjacent to that angle so it's going to be fg cosine theta fg is equal to mg so fgy is mg cos theta okay so this way we have both of them solved so if we need to plug it in we can and we actually need to plug in fgx right now okay so fgx is mg sine theta okay now to replace fn okay now again referencing video 57 uh 67 pardon me okay the normal force and gravity were actually opposite each other but in this question fn is not opposite to fg they're going in different directions okay fn is actually opposite to fgy okay and the fact that this car is not accelerating up or down so you can do a little mini section here in the y direction the fact that it's not accelerating up or down acceleration zero in the y direction f net is zero so if we say f net y is equal to zero in the positive y we've got fn in the negative y we only have fgy so fn minus fgy is equal to zero therefore fn is equal to fgy okay if fn is equal to fgy that's what i'm going to plug in here so fn does not equal just fg it's fgy okay so and of course fgy we just solved it it's mg cos theta so i'm going to plug in mg cos theta so mu s mg cos theta is equal to mg sine theta okay so the i like this problem because it actually shows you and actually makes you derive the expression for the coefficient of friction based on whatever angle the incline is at and as you're going to clearly see in this step it has nothing to do with the mass or the acceleration due to gravity okay because now we've got mu s cos theta is equal to sine theta so i'm going to divide both sides by uh, cos theta so we get the thetas on the same side mu s is equal to sine theta over cos theta Okay, so let's. Now, from your trigonometry class, you should remember the ratio of sine theta to cos theta is equal to tan theta. Okay, now, mu s, we're given in the problem, it's 0 0.801. That's equal to tan theta. So to get theta by itself, you must take the inverse tangent of both sides. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.801. I just switched the sides there. Okay, when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get theta is equal to 38.69 degrees. Okay, we have to round this to three sig figs since that's what we're given uh, in the problem. So we need three sig figs. So having only one decimal place would make the six, the nine rounds the six up to a seven. So theta is equal to 38.7 degrees. Okay, so that is the angle of your incline for any car parked. Again, irrelevant of mass. Clearly, it wasn't relevant as we had to cancel it out. It played no factor into the actual calculation. Okay, and there you have it, guys. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please click that like button if you did. And be sure to catch the next video, 69, Static Friction on Incline Part 2, where we, we're actually going to be using the same incline, um, except in this case, we're going to be dealing with kinetic friction and some movement. Okay, so be sure to check that out once you get the chance. All right, guys, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will catch you in the next video.